Well, I'm glad we finally shot down the balloon. It should have been done over the Aleutian Islands before we allowed it to drift over practically the whole country. And though the balloon is gone, the message that the CCP was sending with the balloon still needs to be analyzed because the CCP has a long history of humiliating diplomats in unpredictable ways. Go all the way back to 1958 during Khrushchev's second state visit to China. Chairman Mao stuck him in unair conditioned rooms during the sweltering Beijing summer. Uh, the Soviet Union was at the height of its power, having just launched Sputnik, and of course Khrushchev was furious at this, but Mao was just getting started. One morning Mao turned up at Khrushchev's accommodations in a robe with an extra pair of swim trunks and suggested they relax in the pool for a break from the heat. Well, there's just one problem. Khrushchev couldn't swim. And Mao knew this full well, and also knew that he was an excellent swimmer. So cut to the scene in the pool, Mao effortlessly swimming laps while Khrushchev doggy paddles after him, wearing water wings, while translators pace the sides of the pool trying to keep up with Mao. Then go all the way forward to 2016, when President Obama arrived in Hangzhou, uh, and the Chinese refused to provide the customary staircase for the president to disembark from Air Force One, a snub that reverberated through the CCP diplomatic corps at the time and helped birth what's called wolf warrior diplomacy. In 2021, during Secretary Blinken's first meetings with his Chinese counterparts in Alaska, senior Chinese diplomats launched into a surprise 16-minute tirade, borrowing talking points from Black Lives Matter, talking about U.S. hypocrisy and systemic racism. And then fast forward to yesterday. Secretary Blinken was supposed to leave this weekend for a meeting with Xi Jinping when, in an incredible you know, matter of coincidence, a Chinese spy balloon appeared over Montana. And despite an $850 billion defense budget, the American people were literally looking out their windows and watching an adversary's unauthorized aircraft meandering above them without a care in the world. And now Bloomberg has reported that the Biden administration knew about this for days and sat on the knowledge for fear it would jeopardize Blinken's trip. What could they hope to gain that would be worth this abasement? Coming on the eve of Blinken's visit, it was a diplomatic humiliation that made Mao's treatment of Khrushchev look polite and statesmanlike in comparison. The message they sent was, look what we can do. Look what we can do to you and you'll still come crawling back. The silver lining of the spy balloon is that I think it exposes the CCP's new charm offensive as a farce. I'm glad the secretary canceled his trip or postponed it. He should cancel it. But all the Wall Street bosses and media apologists coming back from Davos, gushing about the CCP's change of tone and their willingness to re-engage, that's a farce. It's a bedtime story. They tell gullible Americans. I'd like to think this is the last time that we get fooled, but I'm not holding my breath. This incident, incident should burst anyone's bubble or balloon, as it were, about the true intentions of the Chinese Communist Party.